good morning. Thursday, October 26th. You know why I know that date? Because it's car payment day. Yay, we got bills due. Yeah, I look down. A lady's standing down there. I don't think she wants to be on camera right now, though. I think she would probably slap me. She's dropping me off, running real tight this morning, but I only got to go seven miles to get where we're going. So, we're going to get on the road. We got some trucking to do, and we got to do it in a hurry. We will see y'all in a bit. Let's go for a ride. Rock and Roll Trucker. This is the Rock and Roll Trucker. We're knocking out miles. We're eating good. We're rocking and rolling and having a good time. Come along for a ride. Let's see where we can go today. Hey, y'all. I'm back. We've done things this morning. We woke up this morning. I guess I fell asleep without setting an alarm last night. I went home. Uh, we couldn't deliver my load until this morning at 9 a.m. And it was real close to the house, so I had Aaron come pick me up. We went home and we went to bed. And I either did not set an alarm or I fell asleep without setting one. Setting one. And I just accidentally woke up at 7.30 this morning and I had to get back to the truck and get it fired up and get everything checked and get over to the delivery by 9 a.m. this morning. Woke up in a panicked rush. We somehow against all odds were able to make it. I got there 10, 15 minutes before 9 and it turned out to not even matter anyways because there was already another one of our trucks there and another one pulled in behind me and mine had been rescheduled from yesterday and the one that pulled in from behind me he was actually scheduled for 9 a.m. today well they also had me scheduled at 9 a.m. today but they bumped my they went ahead and unloaded that guy first since he was actually scheduled for today and mine was a bump and then we had the other guy there too so I was all freaking out, afraid I was going to be late, and then I got there, and they didn't take me and unload me at 9 o'clock anyway. So there's that. Then we got that off, and they finally sent me another load, and I'm, I had to run into Chattanooga there, downtown, and kind of downtown, right next door to downtown. Really, really, really inside the confines of Chattanooga. We got a customer over there, and had to go drop and hook over there, and I'm hooked up to that right now, taking one of those good high rate, per, uh, high dollar and cents per mile short, short, short hauls to Cherokee, Alabama, back to my place where we keep losing a lot of time at the last couple of times. But we've got something on us, a little bit of revenue, profitable revenue. It's just not a lot of miles, and uh, we're severely behind on revenue for this week on account of everything that uh, went on Monday with the long unload and that ruining all the rest of my pre-plans. I've lost essentially a full day's work and a bunch of revenue for this week on account of that, so we're desperately behind on revenue. I don't know what I'm doing after Cherokee. Who knows? Uh, that has not been sent to me yet. I, there's been a few times we've gone there and they haven't been able to really find us anything out of there and tomorrow is Friday, which that makes me nervous. I need them to find me something that I can run and deliver tomorrow and then go home or deliver and then hope maybe pick one up for Monday, whatever. I don't know. All I know is by the end of Monday, I need to have more revenue on this truck than I've got right now. And I'm kind of nervous about what they're going to find me to do once I get done over here at Cherokee. I don't know. Figure it out, I suppose. But I've got this heavy, heavy, heavy load of recycled paper, uh, bales of scrap paper going to the plant over there for them to recycle and turn back into other products. And, uh, it's very heavy, like pretty much everything else we haul. And uh, it was a hectic start to the day, but we're rolling now. We we got to make a fuel stop somewhere once we get past Decatur, Alabama. There supposedly a speedway there with a decent price and we're gonna get that we just stopped at the QT back here the quick trip and got us a, some uh, caffeination for our minds to get us mentally sharp and alert here you know got us a big cup of rooster booster light I love that stuff it's energy drink on tap at the fountain and I got the light sugar free version it's really tasty and probably horridly horridly horrible for my body but I needed a wake-up call because I didn't get a chance to 
get my coffee or anything this morning. So, we're caffeinated. So we can make this journey. Make this trip together. We're going to get out here and do some driving. Now that you know what's going on with me. If you cared, now you know. I'm going to get some of this trip knocked out. And I'll get back with y'all when we get somewhere around the paper mill. Or somewhere there by close. And let you know what we're doing for the rest of the day. I'll see you then. Y'all have a good morning, afternoon, or whatever you've got going on right now until then, until I get back. Stay out of trouble. I like it when y'all are with me. I don't want you to be in trouble. Can't be losing y'all. All right? We'll see you in a little while. Howdy ho, howdy ho, howdy ho, folks. We're almost to where we're going in Cherokee. We're almost back to that familiar place that I've taken you to a few times with me. Some days to much quick success and to others long, painful delays. We're hoping for the best today. We were on the way, got some fuel, yeah, back around outside of Decatur, Alabama, and uh, we got sent a load earlier. We were gonna, they set me up on something, they were gonna meet deadhead all the way from Cherokee, Alabama to uh, Montgomery, Alabama to uh, Coca-Cola to pick up a load going to Savannah, Georgia that didn't deliver until 1.30 tomorrow and if you're keeping score here you know that I've been trying to go home as consistently as I can on the weekends on Friday and that was just not going to work for me especially after the dead hit. It took the uh, rate per mile down to an unmanageable rate that I was not willing to do that that uh, trip for, so I messaged and explained my case and turned that down, and they called me on the phone and uh, offered me another load that that's still going to be a big deadhead, roughly the same deadhead, kind of close, but it's a better rate, and it's a dropping hook on both ends that's ready now and lands roughly an hour from the house, if even an hour, in the Dayton, Tennessee, where I can zip back and go home pretty easily there. So, that worked out for the better. Still not spectacular money, but better money and much better management of time and much more uh, suitable to my situation. So, I like it. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't like turning stuff down or saying no, but I've learned that you've just got to if it doesn't work for you ever since I started this owner-operator project here. Been driving for a long time, but now that it's my own ship that I'm navigating, I've learned that I just have to, you know, kind of got to look out for myself there. Doesn't always work saying no. Doesn't always work out to where you get something better, but more times than not, it has so far. And that's one thing I have appreciated with being here at BWY is they don't give me a hard time about saying no. Uh, they, it's, uh, they've been very flexible and amicable with me on turning down loads that just don't quite work for me. And 95% of the time so far, they have found me something more suitable. Has it worked every time? Sometimes you're just in a spot, you know, where there's nothing great and you're at the end of the week and there's not much, you know, stuff to get you where you want to be and you just kind of got to eat it and do what you got to do. But for the most part, they've been very, very, very good about not raising a stink when I say no. And I know it's like it's it's my truck and everything and I've got the right to say no, you know, but a lot of places would still give you crap and, you know, try and find you the next worst thing and not really do anything to improve your situation. I can say that BWI has been pretty good about uh, working with me on these things. So I do appreciate that. So we're we still got a big deadhead to do after this, but it's to a much better load. One that works way better for me. So that's where we're at right now. We're about to pull into the guard shack area up here at Essity in Cherokee, Alabama, the place you've been with me several times and had a saga here last week with a big long delay and all. Hopefully that doesn't happen today, but 
we're about to pull up to the guard check area. I'm going to have to get out and slide my own. Oh, we got us a line today. This is not good. Maybe some of these guys are droppers and hookers. I don't know. But we got to get on up here, slide our tandems, and get all checked in. Hopefully all in a timely fashion. So I'm going to call it quits on this clip for the moment. And I'll get back with you guys once we get done here and are seeing how this deadhead and everything is going to go. So I'll see you all again here shortly. Good evening, afternoon, whatever it is, people. All I know is that sun is bright. It's glaring in the camera. It's glaring on my face. We're here. Uh, my hopes of having things taken care of at the paper mill in a timely manner this time did not come true. We were there for just a little bit over two total hours. From the time, uh, from the time we checked in, the different warehouses were playing petty games with each other. And the one that ended up having to be the one to unload it, they were not going to be in a hurry to get anything done. I am five minutes away from hitting the two-hour period of my split sleeper. So I'm kind of just creeping on the clock here, just doing the under five miles an hour creep here. Just uh, trying to kill a couple more minutes. I'm going to pull over and stop for a moment here until somebody else comes along and I'm blocking their way. But yeah, we're trying to knock out our... Uh, We'll get this two hour portion of the split done just in case it comes in handy and on getting us home quicker tomorrow. We may be able to take an eight tonight if we can slip in and actually get this load picked up. I got a pretty healthy deadhead to go and I've got just enough time to maybe get there if there are no delays and nothing ridiculous. And this five minutes I'm trying to kill really doesn't help. I kind of need that five minutes, but I think I might still be able to get in there. I'll be having to repark it really close by there somewhere, so that's a an ordeal in itself. But uh, yeah, we gotta figure something out there. I don't I don't know how many hours I'll end up back with if I do do a split. I don't know. I haven't done all the calculations and all, so we might still have to pull a whole ten before we head back. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. We're down to about three and a half minutes now. I love the electronic log books, don't y'all? Yeah. Well, we're going to Newton, Mississippi to a Lazy Boy warehouse to uh, do a preloaded drop and hook, and we're taking that back to Dayton, Tennessee for tomorrow. Regardless of whether I have to do the full 10 or whatever, it's a drop and hook on both ends, and it should land me back at home at a timely manner, at a pretty decent time to have a good Friday evening at home with my lady and my dog. My dog! Yeah, old Dash the Puppers. So, uh, barring any disasters, I'll be home tomorrow regardless. Just this, all of this will determine how, how much earlier or how much later. So, yeah, that's where we're at. We're just trying to get out of this here Cherokee, Alabama place. This has uh, been a rather frustrating place to come the last couple of times. Not going to lie. It's been the first time or two I came, it was a fairly quick process. In there, out of there. And now it seems like they're just getting very full in the warehouses and overbuying this stuff or something. And then on top of that, there's the two warehouses right side by side that they'll unload in. And it's a whole different crew in both of them. One side seems to be more or less just warehouse. And the other one's like warehousing that feeds directly into the production line. And the production line here lately likes to tell you that they can't unload you that they're not running what you've got and they can't take it right now and they sent me next door to the other warehouse and I went over there and that guy was like well, they're still running what you've got they're still running the color paper you brought in they can unload this I said uh, they don't have any trucks in their doors over there we've got four in line over here you'll be way in line and uh you need to go back over there and try them again so I went back over there and tried them again and the they came back to the window and they're like, let me guess. He told you to come back over here. I said, yeah, he needs to try again over here. And he goes, he got all in the huff and a puff. And he's, I don't know what that guy's problem is over there. He's, well, we'll do it. Just get in that door right there. They're just being petty over there, which to me, it sounds like both parties and both people in both warehouses are being petty and just trying to make the other one do the job. So they, they begrudgingly put me in the door and then proceeded to spend nearly two hours not really doing anything. So, uh, some people's kids, right? I don't know. Well, I'm going to get off here. We're about to roll over on this two hour mark here. And uh, that's going to take us 
on down the highway to Newton, Mississippi. Y'all be good till I get back to you. It may be this evening, and it may be dark. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Any way it goes, you'll see this beautiful face at least one more time on this video. I'll see you then. Go hang out. Do whatever you do. Enjoy your time. I'll see you in a bit. Hello, hello. Excuse the glare and the streaks on the windshield there. The sun is shining gorgeously out front, and I've got a lot of bug streaks on my windshield. I ran out of washer fluid earlier today, and I've not been able to procure any more yet. So my windshield is in desperate need of a washing, like bad, bad, desperate need of a washing. I've picked up a lot of bugs today. And here we are. We're on the back roads in Mississippi here. We're on a I think we're on a county road. I don't think this is a state road. I don't know. We're steadily working our way towards Newton, Mississippi. We've still got quite a ways to go and not a hell of a lot of time to get there, but I think we've got just enough. We'll see what happens. If I find just the most extraordinary place on earth to stop and camp out until morning time and go in and get it, we might do that. I don't know. We will see. We are rolling along. I just wanted to get in here and get another little clip in before the sun goes down and it's too dark to see me. You know, let y'all see, despite the streaks on my windshield, you can see that gorgeous sky out in front of me there. It is absolutely beautiful out this evening. Beautiful, beautiful weather out here in Mississippi. Beautiful sky. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a happy recovery from being back there at the godforsaken paper mill back there that just keeps on eating up my time. I really should be another hour, hour and a half down the road by now, but it's like you get there and you just get held hostage anymore. But, uh, it's alright. It's alright. We're gonna make the best of this gorgeous evening drive back here on these back, on these roads with not much traffic. That's one good thing about getting down into Mississippi. It's, uh, there's a lot of pretty area in Mississippi and you don't generally have to deal with much traffic, no matter where you're at. Not bad, not bad. I've never, I've never minded driving down to Mississippi. I've not had to do an incredible, well, I've done a lot of passing through Mississippi. I haven't done near as much on picking up and delivering in Mississippi. I've done some, probably did the most when I was working for Corsa Can of Bedding, hauling mattresses and going to furniture stores and stuff like that uh, you know, we'd get down into we'd take loads that would go into a certain area and you know you'd get you know anywhere from two to eight nine ten twelve stores you know in an area so whenever we did get down to Mississippi on that job we'd cover you know cover quite a few things make quite a few deliveries but I've always found it kind of I, I, I can't say I'd ever want to live in Mississippi but there's a lot of peaceful just pretty quiet, open places in Mississippi. Just aesthetically appealing, if not appealing in any other ways. It's, it's a pretty place to look at. Lots of woods, lots of green. Get some nice skies here. But yeah, I'm not going to keep on rambling. I got to check my map again, see what my next turn is. So, oh, and, and my, I'm getting stuffed up. There's something in the air here stirring up my allergies here, too. So, but. I shall return when we get stopped for the evening. We'll, uh, we'll cap this thing off and bid a farewell and a good night. And uh, until then, go do what you do, and I'll get back to you here in a little while. See you in a bit. Hello. You see, we're in the sleeper. It must mean we're done. We've stopped about 20 miles short of where we got to be for our drop and hook load. We were just about completely out of time. We, we had about 20 miles to go and we had about 20 minutes. So by the time we got in there, we would have basically run out of hours trying to check in to do the drop and hook. And, uh, so there really wasn't much sense in finishing it out. I was gonna have to go either do a split break or a full break. Either way, we did it and I'm close enough to where I'm really not gonna lose too much time in the situation. So we went out and stopped short. I was just tired too. We needed to call it a day. I got real, real, real tired this evening. My, I was, my eyes were not doing real good with the night driving tonight. They were just not, they were just straining and not feeling real good. So it was time to pull it over. So we're down here just a little past 
uh, Meridian, Mississippi, right there at the 20 split there at the Mr. Fuel. Surprisingly enough, there was a handful of parking spaces here still available uh, at you know, 9 o'clock at night. So that, that, that worked out pretty good. But, you know, we're going to go to bed here real shortly. And uh, we're going to get up, make the dropping hook, and make a beeline back for Dayton, Tennessee. Get that dropping hook on that end done as quick as we can and beeline it, you know, an hour or so back to uh, Ringgold, Georgia. Park this wagon and have Aaron come pick me up and we're going to go home for the weekend. Yeah, that's what I'm ready for. I don't really have any musical recommendations for you this evening. I didn't really listen to any music today. I listened to uh, audiobooks all day long. That's all I got. Uh, so I'm going to, in place of a music recommendation, I'm going to recommend a book slash audiobook. And from one of the most... <coughs> He is pretty rock and roll dude, I guess, when you really look at uh, his history and how he was. But Hunter Hunter S. Thompson, I pulled up the uh, audio book for uh, the Rum Diary. Rum Diaries, Rum Diary. I can't remember if it's plural or singular there. And I just finished listening to it today. But I listened to that. That was uh, really... Uh, they, 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 there was a movie version of that from quite a few years ago, and I remember seeing it, but don't remember a lot about whether it was good or not, but the books turned into movies. The movies are usually not as good, so uh, uh, Johnny Depp was in it. He kind of spearheaded it. I believe he's the one that, digging through Hunter S. Thompson's stuff, even, I believe the story goes that he found the trans, the, the unpublished book of the of, of that in Hunter S. Thompson's stuff at one point, and he had that turned into a movie and everything. But it's a really, really good... It's 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 not one of his, uh, like, true-life stories. It's a, it's, it's an actual novel, not based on his personal stuff, to my knowledge, although it's, it very well <laughs> might as well have been. But uh, he uh, was an absolute just cannonball f near just on the fringe of being a, a madman lunatic but just an absolute brilliant writer that just I, majorly influential in the journalism with it, you know if he created the gonzo journalism and all of his writings you know all the the his stuff with the Hell's Angels and, you know, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I mean, the guy, the, the guy lived a life like not many other people have lived. I mean, very, very, very rock and roll in the spirit of the way he conducted his life. He was a madman, but he was a genius as well. A just brilliant writer in this, uh, the Rum Diary there. It's, a uh, very it's hard to stop listening to it I, it's I i listen to you know it's easier to listen for me rather than you know read the actual books you know since i'm driving so much but it was it was hard to turn off just captivating writing his writing style um, it was just really spectacular so that's my recommendation today in lieu of not really listening to any music to recommend today uh, it's it's not rock and roll music but it's from a rock and roll guy rock and roll dude you know he, he lived the life like maximum to the fullest more than pretty much anybody else ever could so that's my recommendation uh, that's about all I've got for the day I'm worn out I'm ready to get a few hours of sleep and I believe I'm going to do that so I'm going to sign off from you guys here and as always whenever whatever time of the day or night you're watching this have a good morning good night good afternoon whatever and uh, do do your best always. Whatever you're doing in life, do it to the best of your ability, and treat everybody as good as you can treat them. And uh, y'all have a good whatever it is. Like I said, morning, noon, night, and uh, we'll sign off. And I will see you guys on the next one. It's nighttime here, so I'll say good night. <laughs>